on his nose. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I have a 2018 BMW M140i to show you. Um, haven't done a review in a while, but this is going to be an interesting video for several reasons really, because the second video I posted on my YouTube channel was in fact a BMW 125D, which was a brilliant car, and it's literally the same spec as this pretty much. Obviously this is the flagship model, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they compare although it has been a few years since I actually owned that car. This is also my partner's car, so it's kind of an ample opportunity really to show you what this car is like, because I've spent a lot of time behind the wheel of this. So yeah, let's just get into it. So let's talk about the spec. Um, first thing you may be wondering is, is it an OPF vehicle? Um, no, it's not, it's a pre-OPF, and there's an easy way to distinguish that. You come down here where the canards are, you got this little uh, section where it lets through air, and this is completely open and then the other side it's completely blank you can't there's no open area whereas an opf vehicle will have two open sections where this only has one so if it is an opf vehicle both of them will be open whereas this one only one side is open which means it's a pre-opf which means it sounds much fruitier and much nicer more on that later on but yeah this is um obviously a shadow edition and there's easy ways to distinguish that as well down here in the light cluster, you've got these black inserts in there, which make it look much nicer, especially with this black sapphire paintwork, which is also the name of the color. Over here, you've got some nice grills, which are completely blacked out, courtesy of the Shadow Edition. Come down to the side for the wheels. We have some lovely 18 inch jet black alloys, which are definitely my favorite standard wheels for this car. What, what rubber have we got on here? I can't remember. Pilot Sport 4s, very nice. And I love the big blue brakes on these as well. Obviously you got your standard silver wing mirrors to distinguish that is. An M140i, one of the easiest ways to find out. Some of you eagle eye viewers may have noticed it's not standard and that is because it is modified. If you come to the side, it might become apparent because if you look at it, it's squatting quite low and I think it's running uh, is it 15 mil H&R lowering springs? Which, yeah, for me, definitely looks nice because it kind of reminds me of the Z3M Coupe, which is a very beautiful design in my opinion. So it just kind of reminisces that um, design. Come around the rear, this is probably my favorite modification um, of all, and it's this Riga diffuser. It's, um, it's in gloss black as well. And I actually got this for my partner for a Christmas present and she was delighted because the standard diffuser is this, this kind of like a darkish gray and it's completely flat that like there's no, there's no fins like there is on here. So I just think this looks OEM plus. Um, it just kind of suits the car and the nature of the car. Whereas the, the standard gray one just looks drab. Um, also down here, this is not, this is came standard with the car, but we have an M performance exhaust, which sounds, like I said, fruity and very bassy, more than that later. But in terms of modifications, I'm pretty sure that's it actually. But overall, it is just a very beautiful looking car. And obviously, Shadow Edition lights at the back, they are tinted and they do look very nice compared to the normal ones. Right, let's have a look inside and immediately you are greeted with this M140i plaque um, and it's still got the original blue sticker on and um, my partner is very um, reluctant and she would kill anyone if they were to peel that off so, so that's definitely staying there. As for interior, we have the black Dakota leather with extendable feature for your legs and we have another modification air freshener with an M140i on it, very nice. Um, Let's just get inside and show you quickly the spec. Probably very familiar to everybody because it's safe to say the M140i has definitely done the rounds on the internet. So in terms of spec, we have this black gloss trim, which is quite um, unusual. You normally get the silver trim, but this one actually has the black gloss, which I think looks much better, but also not really good for scratches. 
steering wheel is beautiful this is probably my favorite bmw steering wheel not too much going on but it just looks ergonomically beautiful um what else we got our big this is a little sliding tray for your cup holders and a nice rubbery mat there storage is more than adequate down here you've got space for some glasses what have we got in here yeah very nice now it just fits snug in there and you've got a usb in there uh what else have we got these door bins are really good you can fit a good sizable water bottle in there and more glove boxes full but spacious and down here you also have space for some rubber gloves which is very sizable and we even have some lovely stitching that goes across the dashboard just makes it feel just a bit more premium we've also got the harman kardon sound system which is part of the shadow edition because i remember having it on my um shadow edition 125d as well as the M blue m sport brakes so i think that's part of the shadow edition well so we've got we've got a sat now which shows you the world uh we've got cruise control we've got several displays in front of us which is like half analog half digital uh what have we got you got m140 um digitally on the show there and we can see our mpg average speed date temperature how much fuel is left and down here we have the iDrive controller for our interface up there and our gear selector eco sport traction off we also have heated seats climate control these lovely touch sensitive buttons um, which I never use, but it's still a brilliant idea. You know, you got a CD player. I love those. And you can change the temperature here as well, which is a very cool idea. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Let's have a quick look at practicality because that is just as important because we do have three seats in the back. So we just quickly jump in the back. This is, of course, in my driving position. So if we pull it all the way back. Um, not great but not too bad headroom is actually adequate i've actually got quite a bit of room for my head and i am five foot eight and a half for any of you wondering um my seat is quite low but there's still a bit of room for my feet knee room is not particularly great but i do sit really far back and it's not too bad in the grand scheme of things if you actually drove like a normal human being and sit in the correct position but yeah, there's an okay amount of room for two human beings in the back, not three. Three is way too cramped. Uh, up here you've got a grab handle, um, and that's probably about it, apart from your vents down here and your 12 watt socket. So, right, let's check the boot, because the boot is not as bad as you'd think. Okay, so coming to the boot, we have 350 litres, which is actually quite sizable, and the space is very wide. Um, I actually moved house with my 125D and I actually fit a mattress in the actual car, a double mattress for that matter. Um, obviously seats were down, passenger shelf was out, but needless to say, it's actually not that bad for space. I also transported my 55 inch TV, which was still in its box. So it's not actually a bad size and you've got your health pack in here, um, Tevron points, uh, you've got your 12, another 12 volt socket up here. Netting down here, which if you watch my 125 video, you can fit a, a very nice sizable melon there. Um, down here, even a bit more space, battery, space for a bunch of bananas, just a singular one for today. Um, and yeah, practicality wise, I think the M140i isn't that bad, especially if you were to get it in a five door platform. Right, enough rambling on. I want to drive this thing and tell you my mixed feelings about the M140i because I've got some great things to say about it, but not so great things about it okay let's go for a drive so guys you join me in the m140i what do we have underneath the bonnet? We have the most famous B58 engine, which is a straight six turbocharged unit, putting out about 340 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, weighs around 1500 kilos, give or take, and 0 to 60 is dealt with in a 
eye watering four and a half seconds and obviously it's rear wheel drive so given it's a one series it's short wheelbase so this is a recipe for an absolute laugh that's for sure one thing i want to talk about is value for money um if any of you guys don't know i was actually considering buying one of these or i probably was going to buy one of these before i bought my c63 and then my partner decided she was going to buy one uh, which kind of negated me buying one so in that price bracket you are looking around £22,000 to buy one of these around 44,000 miles so arguably very good value for money considering what this car has with the cruise control sat now with the globe on it uh, you've got heated seats you've got the absolute amazing zf8 speed gearbox which is a really really good gearbox for literally everyday use of course this is not a full-blown m car so you're not be paying the, the the silly m car prices for servicing and parts you and you the attacks is probably about 155 pounds i think that's after 2018 and before is about 210 pounds not too sure on those figures but they are near enough the right figures so so far so good and it just keeps getting better really because if there's one thing i really want to talk about it's fuel economy and if you guys know my channel very well or know me i love mpg and if there's one thing this car does very well it's miles per gallon considering the nature of this engine this car has averaged 33.5 miles per gallon over the past thousand or several thousand miles it's done which i think is exceptional and i really really good for a car of this much performance which gives a c63 a run for its money it's unbelievable like miles per gallon like this car does lots of different trips it does town it does town runs it does dual carriage runs it does spirited runs like we're doing now um and yeah 33.5 miles per gallon is its average which i think is absolutely fantastic and on a longer run this is where it gets really good now you can see how excited i am um if you're going a long run let's say you go to devon which is a uh, well depending where you are in the country let's say it's a three hour drive three and a half hour drive down the m5 or whatever 70 miles an hour cruise control you could easily expect around 40 to 45 miles per gallon which is absolutely mind-boggling to me because put that in perspective my bw 116 does 53 miles per gallon and it spends most of its time on dual carriageways so it kind of makes me feel like what is the point in buying a 1160 or 120 or 125d obviously there's a huge price difference which is definitely understandable but if you've got the money to buy one of these and use one for a daily fuel consumption is absolutely spectacular if you are worried about fuel consumption fear not because this car is incredibly efficient for what it is take my word for it if you do drive it foot down pedal to the metal all the time then i expect you won't be seeing these sort of figures but mixed driving 33 and a half miles per gallon exceptional okay we've done some of the boring stuff you don't probably want to hear you want to hear what it sounds like so i put it in sport mode which makes the throttle response and gear changes longer so approaching a twisty section now and if we just put our foot down speed limit um yeah the speed limit was quickly diminished this car has a bucket ton of torque it's so torquey and so low down it's so fast and this gearbox really does complement it very well with the b58 engine brakes are all right they're not they're, they're, they're strong enough but i think there could be a bit more bite some sometimes i'm in town and i'm putting my foot down on the brake uh, it does feel like it, it needs more bite and i do feel like it could probably do a bit more bite in general not just around town but maybe on these roads so yeah brakes could definitely be 
stronger. The steering is quite sharp, very responsive to when I put my inputs into it. Okay, no one's behind me, I'm in sport mode. Let's do a quick 0 to 60. Blimey! That is power. Didn't do too bad in traction either. But this is now where it kind of goes downhill because I've been spoiled when I was younger. I used to have nice BMWs and I was kind of brainwashed into myself thinking, oh, this steering is brilliant. But actually, now that I've got a C63 with a hydraulic steering system and I've experienced other cars, I've realized that the steering in this is quite disconnected. You don't feel as much. There's not much feedback going on. It's direct. It's very quick to turn in, but I can't. It doesn't inspire me with confidence. This steering, um, and then it only gets worse when you put into sport mode, which is brilliant for fun driving. But if you do put in sport mode, the steering becomes unnecessarily heavy. And I used to think that was the best thing in the world when I used to have these cars when I was much younger and I was juvenile. But now I hate it. Um, it's just annoying because comfort steering is great. It's much better than sports, but the sports sport is obviously the best for the sporty driving. But got this terrible steering, so I don't know how you can kind of code that out, really. Okay, we're just gonna let this guy go. I'm gonna put our foot down. Oh, it's so fast. This car is so fast, and that beautiful soundtrack in the background it's that sonorous soundtrack it's lovely very very lovely um, but the power delivery of this car is absolutely savage and it's all low down and this is kind of where this car falls short for me because the power delivery is is very fun and very good for daily use but it just kind of reminds me of a diesel the way there's so much low down torque and it, the way it shoves this car, it's great. If it feels great, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was all amazing up until about 4,000 revs, then it kind of just wants to change gear because that it would be the most efficient way for this engine to carry on with its speed, if, if you get what I'm saying. And that's, yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment really because the whole point of having a nice, straight six petrol engine is to really hear it sing which it sounds beautiful in the high rpm bands but there's no incentive to rev it out because the, the torque is all lower down so it's, it's quite frustrating really because it, it's a beautiful beautiful engine it sounds great the power is relentless but to rev it out there's no point but other than the noise I'm guessing if you wanted to really extract the higher revs, maybe there's a map for it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know about the maps in this car because it's completely standard. But there's just no incentive to drive it all the way up the RPM band. This is just a little bit of a shame for a hot hatch. But needless to say, it's still intoxicating and it's still ridiculously fun and the power is savage. Stick it to manual mode, put into third gear. Oh, so much power, it's ridiculous. But oh, like I said, there's just no incentive to do so because when you when you hit about four five now, he just wants to change. He know it wants to, but you just want to hear that soundtrack. It's so frustrating. Ah, uh, van just pulled out in front of me. So enough of the power talk right now. Let's talk about something a bit more serious. As for daily use, this car is fantastic. It rides okay. Um, it's, it's sitting on 18 inch wheels. So it does feel a bit bouncy, but none of the bounces feel harsh. Like it's not uncomfortable. Um, it's not too bad to ride. Comfort wise in here, well, these black Dakota leather seats, they are reasonably comfortable. 
they hold you in okay. Um, and longer journeys, I've been sat in these, they are relatively comfortable. So on that front, all is well. Obviously we have cruise control, heated seats, and many other nice things, as well as the really beautiful zf 8 b gearbox. But yet again, there is something which falls short of this car. Um, and my partner's gonna just kill me for how much I'm scrutinizing a car, but it's the truth, and that is the handling department. The handling is just kind of floaty and unsettled. Any slight imperfection on the road and the car just feels very unhappy and it kind of sometimes snaps out, um, which isn't a very confident, inspiring characteristic you really want in a car when you're pushing on. The best way to kind of describe it is sketchy. Um, and it twitches more than a bunny's nose. But I am part of the M140i group on Facebook and I am aware, and I've seen many YouTube videos, that handling mods can make this car a force to be reckoned with, really. Like, you can do like an under brace, uh, you can do, um, is it M4 lower control arms? I can't remember the exact parts, but there's many modifications to do to uh, help this car handle a lot better. But obviously, we're dealing with a standard car today, so, out of the box, this car just doesn't really handle well, which doesn't inspire confidence with when you got this much power. Yeah, you kind of want to be going to these corners and putting your foot down with relative ease, whereas this car is, is literally just a bunny after having a bite of a banana. The one last thing I really want to talk about with this car in terms of a negative, um, yeah, my partner's really gonna kill me after seeing this, but it's just the way this car makes me feel when I drive it. Um, I used to really want one of these, and now that I've had the luxury of being able to drive this courtesy of my partner, it just doesn't tickle my fancy. Um, it's not something that I have an urge to go out and drive out. It's, it's, could I, is the word dull? I'm looking for. Obviously modifications could maybe enhance this car dramatically if you were to make, make the suspension much better and hand it, make it handle much better and maybe whack a massive turbo on it as well whilst you're at it. That might make the car just a bit more lively and yeah, it's just something about this car I just can't imagine myself, I don't know, get up in the morning moving all my free cars out of the way which I have to do and taken out to buy a, a bottle of milk, which is what I do with my C63. That is a car that I would literally do anything to go out my way just to do the most silliest of um, errands, just to drive my C63. And with this car, it's great at what it does, don't get me wrong, it literally does. It ticks most boxes and it's so good at what it does, but it just falls short of my smile. I, I, I mean, I'm smiling now, but I just can't put it into words. The easiest comparison I can make is my C63 is in the garage. There are two cars in front of it. I will happily get those cars out onto the road and move my other car, my, the C63, onto the road. And I'll be more than happy to do that just so I can get a bottle of milk and take a nice, easy, relaxing drive there or a very fast and ferocious drive there. And I will go for that trouble just so I can get that milk. This car on your brand, if this was in the garage, I'd leave it there. And that that's where this car for me, yeah, it just doesn't excite me enough. It, it, it's not an occasion enough. That's really where this car lies for me. But yeah, this car on the whole, it is, it is a barrel of laughs. It's so lively and you have to keep, it does keep you on your toes, that's for sure. And I am absolutely in no doubt if you put some handling modification on this and a massive turbo, this would be an absolute riot and I would love to see what this car would be like after all those modifications. But as standard, it just doesn't quite live up to the, the fun factor I was always expecting it to have. So I'm going to sum up this M140i review. 
I think it's a tremendous and almost perfect car. I know I've been fairly critical, but we have to remember it's not a full-blown M car, and I think its flaws are just overshadowed by its brilliant value for money, its exceptional fuel economy, its relatively low running costs. We have a considerable amount of practicality and we also have reasonable comfort. It's got a sumptuous soundtrack, it's got relentless power, it's got an amazing engine and transmission, and it's just a beautiful looking car and the interior is just a great place to be. If I didn't own my 116D or my C63, then this would most certainly be the car I would have. And I'm sure with modifications, this car would be nothing short of excellence. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a like and subscribe, that'd be much appreciated. And if you've got any questions, then please do comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.